In this video, we're going to talk about how to handle daylight savings time um, in Power BI when you're uh, changing time zones, usually between UTC and whatever your local zone is. Um, I've seen a few questions about this in the community lately, so I thought I'd look into it more. Um, I, I read a bunch of articles that I found on this subject, um, and they all had fairly uh, complex solutions. Um, and uh, so I started looking into it, and, it, and at first, uh, I was a little disappointed and I thought, you know, the native um, Power Query functions for date time and date time zone uh, didn't seem like they could do it. It seemed like everything was, you could add or subtract a fixed number of hours and it didn't seem to incorporate um, the daylight savings uh, component. Well, so I played around with it some more and I actually had developed solutions on how to do this like with a REST API or do it with uh, some R code. Um, and had those working. And then actually when I was putting to the demo together for those, I tried to show sort of the wrong case with the Power Query uh, native functions and it, and it worked for me. And um, so I wanted to share that today um, so that uh, you can more easily uh, account for daylight saving times if you need to, uh, to worry about this in your, in your model. And so the key functions are the ones listed here and we'll, we'll talk about those. Um, and um, I'll provide some a function that will help you do it real easily, um, depending which way you're going from local to UTC or UTC to local. It works uh, either direction. Um, and then I also just had some fun with it and uh, tried to see how how much information Power BI I had under the covers as far as um, when daylight savings time occurs. Um, so I, I did a range of dates, uh, years to, to find out when that happened and it worked. So I thought that was kind of cool and thought I'd share it. I'm going to move over to Power Query for the demo. Uh, before I do that, just a reminder to subscribe to this uh, Hoosier BI YouTube channel if you're learning from these videos. Uh, I'd appreciate it. All right, so let's move over to the query editor. All right, and I'm just going to tick through these here and progress through uh, what, what I found. Um, let me see, I make it a little bigger. So the first thing I did was just um, in most of these, um, just generating uh, a list of dates and I wanted dates throughout the year. So when daylight savings time was in effect and when it wasn't. So I just used this little approach here to do list.transform of the number, a list of numbers one to 12. And for each one of them, I'm converting it to the UTC um, time zone. That's what this the zero does here at the end. Uh, but also at, at 2 o'clock, so that's the 14, uh, 2 in the afternoon. And I wanted to have um, the hours component there, so it would be real obvious when I convert these, you know, if they stay all the same, then it didn't work, but if they if there's a difference part of the year, um, then it did. Okay, so then I converted that to a table, changed the type to uh, date time zone, um, renamed it to UTC time, and then all I did was change the type from here and went and just chose uh, date time. And I was surprised when it just worked. And I'm in Indiana East uh, time zone and uh, we do daylight savings times. There's a day in March and a day in November when that starts. So this, this made sense, uh, this looked correct. Um, so I actually deleted the other approaches because if you can do it with the native functions, you absolutely should. Um, so I went ahead and just reproduced those steps um, in a simple function here. And let's open the advanced editor to, to show that better. Um, and so I just have this simple function that has this input DT as a date time. The output's going to be a date time. Um, so whatever you, you input as a date time gets stored in the source. And then the key step here is just to force it to be um, UTC, basically. Um, and uh, by adding using date time dot add zone with a zero that forces it to UTC, um, and then you just use date time dot from of that variable to get it in local. And so this reproduces those steps I just showed in the previous query, where uh, it's a date time zone converted to local. All right, and then once you have that function, you know you can use it uh, in your model. In this case, I just um, did an invoke custom column step, so with an add column step. And just you know, use that function and use the UTC time column uh, as the as the input date time. Um, and then, of course, you can also do it 
as a transform step so that you don't have to turn around and remove a column right after it. Uh, I prefer to do things this way. Um, and in this case, I'm just using the transform columns uh, function, uh, telling it which, which uh, column to work on, telling the function to use, and that the output is a date time. And I got the same result there. So that's great. So that approach worked to convert UTC time to local time. I wanted to know if I could do the reverse. It turns out you can. Uh, it's, a, it's a little more complex. So in this case, um, I use the same approach to generate a column of dates. In this case, I'm defining this as the local time, and I want to convert it to UTC. So I added this custom function um, that has a couple extra steps in it. But basically, you know, storing the column value um, in this variable called local, using the same approach as before and generating um, the local time as if this were UTC uh, by doing the add zone zero and then taking date time dot from. Then I'm finding the hours difference um, between those two variables um, as if, you know, as if this was local and then it converted um, to local as if it was UTC, um, finding the hours, uh, hours difference, and then just adding that back to the original value. Um, and then so I get a dynamic value of hours different depending on um, daylight savings time is in effect or not, and then I just return that result. And you can see here um, uh, it works well. Um, so now I had the approach, um, and so I have a function for that as well that does those same exact steps, again, taking a date time as an input. Um, so what I did is just made one function that can do either of these things, so you don't have to add two functions to your to your model. You certainly can, and I'll provide this PBIX as a link uh, in the description below. But this one, um, if I open the advanced editor, it basically has you know both of those parts where you can input um, a, a column um, as a date time, and then you can optionally specify what you want the output to be. And basically, this is set up that you know, if you put UTC, the text UTC, um, as an input, um, then it'll convert from local to UTC. Otherwise, it'll assume that you have a UTC and you want to convert to local. So if you leave that empty, it'll convert to local. And basically, it has the same steps in here. They're a little bit consolidated, um, but then the output is key here. So that basically, you know, if this second parameter is provided and it's uh, the text UTC, then it returns this variable, which is the one I just showed you. Otherwise, it returns the original one. So hopefully you'll uh, find that a, a handy function um, for your use cases as well, if you have to worry about stuff at the hour level and, and worry about daylight savings time. And so I made a just a simple table that shows that it works um, either way. So, you know, again, I start with the, the times. In the first case, I'm leaving the second parameter out. So it's assuming that the time column is UTC and converting that to local time. And again, we're, we're f either four or five hours ahead of UTC or b before UTC. Um, and then this one is assuming that the time column is um, a local time and I want to convert it to UTC. Um, and so in that case, I'm using the function, um, but I'm also providing UTC as the second parameter and then I get my expected results. So, so again, hopefully you find that useful. The last thing I'll share I thought was kind of neat um, and may show you a couple of tricks as well. Um, you know, I was pleasantly surprised that this worked. And so I know in Indiana's history, we did not always observe daylight saving time. We started in 2006. So I wanted to know if wherever uh, Power Query is using its source for this is aware of that. And so I did the following experiment where I list, I made a list of dates between the year 2000 and, and 2040. Um, I just did this here to just add a list of dates between January 1st and December 31st for each year and then expanded that. So that's just a quick way to get all the days for a bunch of years. Um, not the only way to do that for sure. Um, and then um, I used the same approach to generate the, the UTC time. And then I duplicated it. Um, and change this to get the local time. And then on this one, I it was a date time zone type, so I, I returned it as just a date time and just removed the zone. And then added a column to do the hours different. 
and these values you can only see the fives here but there's fives and fours in this column I got rid of this because this is just what I cared about and so since I have every day of all those years I wanted to find out where it changes on what day it changes from five to four and then from four to five so um, there's a nice variation on the group by feature called group local and it allows you to group things whenever a certain value changes um, not not the holistic grouping that's that's the more common and so in this case um, I'm just doing a table group step and I wanted to group on the year and the hours different so I want to group all the days that have the same hours different and I just wanted to take the minimum date so I'm trying to figure out when it starts and then because I use the group kind dot local parameter in table dot group um, it groups it by whenever the value changes from five to four or from four to five and then it gives me the minimum date okay and so now I have all of the the start dates and you'll notice um, because it's the first the, the minimum day of the year I also get all these January dates and so I actually excluded these um, because I know daylight savings doesn't occur in January where I live and so I'm left with just the fours and fives uh, for each year and you can already tell um, that this begins at 2006 so it looks like it, it worked correctly so but I just went ahead and pivoted the hours difference column to four and five uh, renamed them to when it starts and ends um, changed the types and then looked online to compare for past and future years when daylight savings time was supposed to start and end in the Indiana East um, time zone and these matched uh, perfectly so again I was pleasantly surprised um, so it, if it's useful to you to generate this kind of a table for your model to, to look up if daylight savings time is in effect or not for your data or use this other function to directly convert a table a column of dates either to UTC or to local I hope this helps you out uh, again I'll put a link to the PBX uh, below and don't forget to subscribe to the Hoosier BI YouTube channel thank you